Uh, Andy Summers is here. He, along with Stuart Copeland and Sting, were the police. Summers is the producer of a new documentary about the band called Can't Stand Losing You, Surviving the Police. It shows the group's rise to fame. Also, a lot about your life, I should mention that, and the tensions along the way. The stakes have been raised, and instead of rejoicing in the unbelievable success we've created together, we lose sight of the big picture and go on in emotional disorder. Each one of us battling for his own territory. Each one of us wants his instrument slightly louder than the other. Wants his songs recorded, will not be less than anyone else. It's a combative process, the poor engineer trying to arbitrate as three sets of hands fiddle with the faders. Why is it always that way? I don't know, it just seems to be part of the thing. You want to be in a rock band, get yeah. ready to have a fight. Yeah. Right. Put on the boxing gloves. No, they, they, there's that phrase, what's the worst, the, the worst phrase on earth is band meeting, right? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yes, I think it's going to be chaos at, at, at its very best. Now, we both saw this, and by the way, uh, it, it's great. And if you're a police fan or, or a fan of... Uh, what's really happening? What's really happening? Yeah. You, take, you know, you yeah. pull the curtain apart yeah. and you really see what's happening. And here. there's a lot of yeah. documentaries out there, you know, about bands and things. But this is from your point of view. It's first person, so it's like getting in your head. Yeah, very specifically so, because I wrote the book. Like, yeah, why would I write it from any other point of view except mine and the experiences I went through and the fact that I stayed with it mm -hmm. through all the ups and downs and starvation and all the rest of it like th these stories are not new <laughs> and then you get in this band um, which you think oh god it's all going to be so great well of course it's not it's difficult and there are tensions and you have to work out how to keep it together I know you've been asked this a million times. But I first was aware of the band when I saw the movie Quadrophenia. Yeah. And there was this actor named Sting who I'd never heard, first mm. of all, what an odd name mm. back mm. then. Yes. And then I found out he was in a band. Yeah. And then I learned about the band. But already at that point, he was separating himself. Kind of. Well, the, the fact that he was in Quadrophenia was a, a separating thing. I say, pulled him out. And he's barely in the film, actually. Phil Daniels, is, this other right. young actor, is really the star of the film, but they picked, the tabloids in England picked up on Sting because he was young, great voice, good looking guy, and uh, made him a star. It didn't uh, break up the band actually, just added more fuel to the fire, but it, you could see already that there was a tension and maybe our days were numbered. Ultimately. Well, you, you run an interview, there's a woman interviewing him and saying, and uh, of course the other members in the band, uh, what is it, uh, I oh, think yeah. Andy or... Yeah, and he uh, says Stuart. Yeah, 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 yeah he, help, he, he helps out. And, and you see him making this statement saying they're all individual talents and right. they're yeah. all going yeah. our own directions. Yeah. So that, that pretty much tells the story. Does, does creativity and art have to have that? Ego? I think so. I think, I think you have to have a certain amount of that because, you know, what I keep saying, you don't really want a mellow guy in the band or certainly not three mellow guys. I mean, what this comes out of is three guys fighting for the front position. Very much so, you know, loads of ego and feeling very strong on their instruments and I want to be in the lead. Everyone wanted to be a little but louder. Out that, but that, out of that comes, you know, the, the excitement and the chemistry that translates. When did that start to really happen? That the trio became a little divided and everyone wanted to be their instrument just a little louder and the ego got a little bigger. Was there a defining moment or is it just Well, involved? probably by the second album, I would say, you know, the first album, I think we were like very sort of naive, not knowing quite what we were doing, but having enough talent to pull it together. The second album, we were starting to get really hot and uh, that's just the moment when like, the guitar should be a bit loud. Uh, oh, I want the snare drum louder, you know, so on and so forth. You but, know, uh, pri prior, prior to that, um, <clears throat> my favorite moments are with you and Zoot Money and the Big Roll Band. Right. Now right. you say, this is like uh, 1965 or so, yeah. uh, and you're in a rock and roll band and you're having the time of your life and you make an interesting comment. You say, that was before we knew that we were supposed to be uh, depressed yeah. and serious and oh, artists. Oh, right, you were just, yeah. doing, yeah. You were just playing you were just, music. You just having a great time. Yeah. Well, it was, yeah. I mean, I came out of an era that almost preceded like what we know as the modern rock era, where bands started to write songs, become rock stars, and, and it was a whole other thing. We were just trying to entertain mm -hmm. and do the gig. That was it. And at the end of the night, we get paid. That was it. It was very simple. Uh, with the advent of the Beatles, et cetera, the real modern rock era started you had to basically write your own songs and at that time we really did um and then of course everything got it did get more moody and introspective so people started striking attitudes as rock stars people took right. it out more and yeah 
with the writing of the songs, uh, you became an artist. And it was and a real also, difference. Also, drugs played a part. Drugs were oh, a big yeah. part of it, yeah. You talk about that, which is interesting. Well, yeah, that's not like, come on, we're all grown up. Of course there were drugs, you know, yeah. I mean, you know, recreational use recreational thereof. Use, yes. Some of us survived it, some of us aren't right. here anymore. And you can see it in the music and the bands yeah. that you chose and even the band names you chose. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, what happens is you get a lot of very fragile personalities coming into this scene to be musicians. It just goes with the territory. Yeah. And I like are, are you, you're not fragile, are you? Well, I seem to still be here, but... <laughs> <laughs> You survived. Uh, I survived it. Um, thank you. Um, yeah. But, you know, the thing is, you have to be vulnerable all the time. If you're going to be an artist or a musician and try to come up with these creative things, you have to be vulnerable and open to this stuff. So you're sort of like a walking wound yeah. going through this career, which can, in our case, certainly became very highly pressured. Well, the music evolved so much, and then you enter this very strange time, the 70s, and that punk era yeah. and when the police first started you were kind of like faking the punk thing just to fit in yeah and then you found your voice and you found yeah. what it was really yeah. all about well at that particular time of course punk was like a religion in london that went on for about three years if you weren't punk you were out so you know the punk thing was sort of the flag of convenience and we, we came out at the beginning very fast and very furious. We actually managed to finish one show in 12 minutes. We were so fast. <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculous. You know, now what? Um, I was supposed to play for an hour and a half and do it again. But, um, you know, it, it, it was fantastic fun, the punk scene, but it wasn't really who we were. In fact, we, were, we really couldn't get a gig. It was coming to the U.S. and playing the little first three-week tour of the U.S. and playing at CBGB's that, that really got us going. But uh, we started out as, as punk, and then as we practiced, really started to practice together, the other musicality started to, to, to surface, and you know, Sting started to emerge as a songwriter, and mm -hmm. we found this different way of playing together, and sort of the police sound emerged. Did you find, uh, when you look back, and by the way, you're a photographer, I mentioned earlier, photographer, producer, a guitarist, uh, writer, a painter, you know, whatever else. Father. But, Father, by, by the way, one, one of the great moments in this is when you do the reunion concert yeah. and your kids come to the concert yeah. and you had a good line. You wanted them to see. Yes. Well, it's one of those classic things, of course. You know, now I'm the dad, you know, the yeah. police are over and I go, well, I used to be in this rock band. <laughs> <laughs> I was a big yeah. deal. Yeah, oh, I was really, you know, and, and they go, yeah, 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 dad. Sure, yeah, sure, yeah, sure. yeah. Good, you know, good, they're yeah. going off on their skateboards. Yeah. Finally, you know, we got it back together and you know, it was a fantastic for me because they could come and say, oh, we weren't just this little band, see? Yeah. We were this other thing. Oh, you played thing. Dodger Stadium, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah and then the kids were at all the shows. How yeah. did the reunion feel to you? Do, you? do you feel it was a success? Are you happy oh, with how well, it went? It was a phenomenal success. I mean, we couldn't have asked for more, really. We basically filled up every stadium in the world. But at the beginning, I think, you know, before we actually got to that moment when, oh, it's going, we were a little bit... Maybe this is a complete illusion of like, you know, middle-aged men thinking that they can still pull this stuff off. And so everything was penciled in until I think the first gig was at Foxborough Stadium in Boston. Mm -hmm. And it went on sale and it sold out in two hours flat, you know, so, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, and then the whole just went, it's like the domino effect. It's good to know that even you feel that way, that you're inviting people to a party and they're not going to show up. Because yeah, that's a very it normal it's feeling. It's a little scary. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, know, you aren't playing the whiskey, though. I mean, no. there this could have been a lot of empty seats. Yeah, yeah. We could have had, you know, 2,000 people in you know, a 50,000 seat stadium. What, what do you, uh, the question is, what are your relationship now with Sting, with Stewart? How does that work? It's all very sweet at the moment. And, I, you know, I heard from both of them in the last week being, go for it. You know, have, have a they great seen time. It? Oh, that's have good. they seen it? Yeah. Okay, no, they, they like it very much. You're yes. fine with that. Yeah. You know, I, I, whatever you say, you know, there's this film with some honesty and some sort of tense moments in it. But the thing is, it, it's like we're going out on tour again with this film. Mm -hmm. This film goes out. It only extends the, the mythology. Helps. Also, by the way, it also is a tribute uh, to marriage and perseverance. <laughs> well, thank okay. you. Okay. True. Yeah. 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 You were That's married, you, get, you, you got divorced, you got married, yeah. and it's yeah. okay, right? Yeah, we, we got back together. Of course, in the film you see the subplot of myself and my wife, Kate. You know, mm -hmm. we were together and she's the one for me and all that. And then the, the band stuff mm -hmm. destroys that as it destroyed everyone's marriage. But in the case of Kate and I, we got back together. And, uh, you know, she had twins immediately like yeah. that. Like that. <laughs> so, uh, so good, hen good ending. Good, happy Can't ending. stand losing you. Surviving the police opens in select theaters here in LA. It is, if you're a fan of the police, obviously, you're going to go. But even if you're not, it's 
terrific. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Great you so much. Thank you very much.